Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm recommending 15 books that you might want to read if you are going through a period of religious deconstruction. If you've been following me for a while, you might know that I grew up in a pretty conservative evangelical Christian household in America, and I have since deconstructed from that quite a lot. And along the way, have read a lot of incredible books that have really helped me process a lot of things that I've gone through, process what I'm thinking now, and I thought that maybe this video would be helpful for some of you who are in a similar position or have come from similar backgrounds. The majority of the books on this list are primarily about Protestant Christianity. However, there are also some dealing with Catholicism. There's one about Rastafarianism. Generally, these are books that I've read about religious fundamentalism that I have found helpful and that I've really loved. They may not all be for everybody, but perhaps they will help someone out there. And I haven't done a video about deconstruction in a minute and I had been thinking about it because of something that I had been working on. So we're gonna start with some nonfiction titles and then we will move into fiction. I have a few YA books and then adult books in a variety of genres. So let's start with our nonfiction. Editing Bethany here, and yes, I do have a new haircut since I filmed this video, but a couple of things to note. One is please don't mind my haunted ring light. It, it You will see it throughout this video. It likes to act up sometimes, so you know, tis the season, just go with it. And then the other thing is, don't forget, if you are in America, go vote November 5th. Your vote is really important. And also don't forget that there are a lot of really important local elections, ballot initiatives. If you're in New York City, the first of those is one that would protect things like reproductive rights. So if those are things you care about, if you live in the United States, please make sure you go out and vote. I'm going to encourage you to do that. I also realized as I was watching this that there are a couple of nonfiction titles that I failed to include that I think maybe should be on this list. So I'm gonna throw in a couple more now after the fact. First is Broke the Bread, Spilled the Tea by Mitchell Kessler. This is not very long and I think it is one of the best books talking about the theological backing for being inclusive of queer people in the church. I think especially if you are a Christian still, if you are in the church, and if you're not sure how to reconcile being LGBT friendly and not just in the like, oh, we love them, but we won't marry them or let them be in leadership. Not like that, like full inclusivity. <laughs> um, I think this is a really excellent take. It's very smart. It gets into the history and the theology of specific passages, and it is written by somebody who grew up in the church and is still in the church. And I just, I thought this was really good. I've recommended it to other people. The other one that I thought was really good was The Cross and the Lynching Tree by James H. Cone. This is a really important piece of deconstruction because if you are deconstructing your Christian Christianity, you also need to be decolonizing your Christianity and your sense of religion. And this is getting into the history of race and Christianity in America. There are other books I've read that do it as well, but I think this is a really good one. Again, from a theologian within the church, but this is another piece of the puzzle that I think is really important to make sure that you're digging into as you're going through this process, is thinking about the history of white supremacy in the United States and the way that has intersected with the church and the way that Christianity has been used as a tool of oppression. So um, anyway, couple other suggestions. With that said, back to Bethany of the past. Hope you enjoy all of the book recs. If you are early in this process, the book that I would recommend the most is The Making of Biblical Womanhood, How the Subjugation of Women Became Gospel Truth by Beth Allison Barr. This is a really fantastic book written by a woman who is a scholar of historical Christianity, of church history, who is still in the church. She's been part of the Baptist church and she is still a Christian. She is still fairly conservative in some of her views, more so than I am. But I think that she's got a lot of really fascinating things to say in here. It's time for Christian patriarchy to end. Historian Beth Allison Barr shows that biblical womanhood isn't biblical, but arose from a series of clearly defined 
indefinable historical moments. She presents a better way forward for the contemporary church. So again, if you're still in the church, I think that this is a really good resource and a good book to pick up if you're questioning some of these things about gender roles. I thought this was great. Then for a book that goes a step farther, but again is also written by somebody who is an academic and is still in the church, I would suggest Jesus and John Wayne, How White Evangelicals Corrupted a Faith and Fractured a Nation by Kristen Cobes Dumez. This book is amazing. It, I feel like I like tabbed the hell out of it. It just told me so much that I didn't know and I think needed to know about my upbringing and placed it in historical and political context. This is specifically about the American white evangelical church and I think that those elements are really important. I cannot recommend this book enough and also she recently put out a documentary that is amazing too and it's not very long it's only about 30 minutes long I'll link it in the video description down below if you want to go check it out but it's following several women who experienced abuse in church at the hands of leaders and then tying it back into some of these ideas so I think it's really good Highly recommend this, it's incredible. On a related note is hashtag church Two: how purity culture upholds abuse and how to find healing by Emily Joy Allison. This again was so good. If you are somebody who grew up in the purity culture of the 90s and early 2000s in the church, this, this was really healing to read. And I think if that is something you're not familiar with, it does a really good job of unpacking all of the things that happened, the things that have been contributing factors to making so many women in church victims and why it's been so easy for them to become victims of sexual abuse and how that's been swept under the rug. Really good. Highly recommend. The final nonfiction book on this list is something a little bit different. This is How to Say Babylon by Sophia Sinclair. It is a memoir of the author's experience growing up in a very conservative, heavily patriarchal Rastafarian family in Jamaica and what she went through and how she eventually escaped from that situation and the complexity of what it's like to have had parents who loved you in some ways but were also abusive to you growing up. So it's a hard read at times but a really important one and another one that I think gives interesting context to fundamentalist religion and specifically things I didn't know about the history of the Rastafari movement and where it originated. Moving on to fiction, let's start with YA. First up is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a novel in verse that is a coming of age story following a Latine young woman who is growing up in New York City with a very religious Catholic family who is finding herself and figuring out what that means for her when the church doesn't necessarily fit. And while I did not grow up Catholic, I really resonated with a lot of what she went through in this book. I found it to be pretty hard hitting and really meaningful. It's a book that I've read more than once and loved. The writing is gorgeous absolutely recommend this. For something a little bit lighter, you could try Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. This is a really fun book that also has some important things to say. It is a YA coming of age story that is following a group of kids who go to a private Catholic school but, but start a club called Heretics Anonymous because for whatever reason none of them fit in to expectations. There's a Jewish character, a Muslim character, an atheist, and somebody who is Catholic but is a feminist, wants to be a priest and thinks that women should be able to be priests. So it's really interesting and funny and heartwarming and I think what's great about this book is that it doesn't look down on people who find value in religion. I think it shows that that can be an important, valuable thing for people, but also pushes back a little bit on certain things. So I really liked this a lot, would recommend. Next is The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School by Sonora Reyes. This is amazing. It was a National Book Award finalist, definitely deserved it. This book, oh, it's like heart-wrenching at times, but 
really good. It follows a young woman who is living, I think in Texas, goes to a private Catholic school and is secretly a lesbian, but hasn't come out to her family because it's not safe for her to do so. And she's got a crush on a girl and maybe will get her first girlfriend and has to figure out what, what to do when it doesn't seem like it might be safe as a teenager to come out because that is still the case, unfortunately, for a lot of people, even though it may not be for everybody, it is the truth for some people. So really excellent. It has a hopeful ending, even though it's pretty harrowing at times. It's really good. Final YA book is much more intense. It is horror and it does not pull its punches. This is Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. It is about a trans boy who grew up in a fundamentalist evangelical family and now there's been a plague that has sort of destroyed a lot of the world and there's weird horrific things happening but it's drawing on the horror of religious trauma and of trans identity and the trauma of being pushed to be a specific gender that doesn't align with who you are. This one is really intense. Like there's a lot of content warnings for this one. Like I said, it is gruesome. It is a lot, but it is so, so good. And I love this author's writing. I've read a couple of his books now and they're both amazing. That is all the YA. Next is adult fiction. And since we're talking horror, let's just keep going with some horror before I get to some other genres. Personally, I think that horror can be a really great way to explore religious trauma because it's so over the top at least for me, I think it offers a little bit of an emotional buffer with what really happens in the real world and allows you to explore these very difficult traumatic issues. One book on this list, I'm going to say it before I forget it, that I do not have a physical copy of because it's not out yet. It's about to come out as I'm filming this and I had an early digital copy for review, but this is American Rapture by CJ Lead. This follows a very sheltered Catholic teen girl. I know she's a teenager, but this one is adult. It is not way. <laughs> but it follows a really sheltered Catholic girl who has gone to a private school. She's never had a boyfriend. Her family has kept a lot of information from her, including as she comes to find out the fact that there is a deadly virus spreading through America. And in its latest stages, it causes people to become uncontrollably sexual. So think COVID, but with sexual assault zombies. So pretty disturbing. The one thing to know about this is this is a book that is dealing with sexual abuse and sexual assault in the church with purity culture and stuff within the Catholic Church as well. So so you know there are a lot of scenes of sexual assault and abuse. Now I would say that they are not described very explicitly, especially in comparison to the way that other creepy gory things in the book are described, but there is a lot of it there. So use caution with that. I thought this was excellent though. I thought it was really smart. And thematically, one of the things that's really interesting about it is that in a lot of these conservative <laughs> religious circles, a teaching that you get is like, oh, well, women need to behave a certain way or dress a certain way, because if they don't, men just cannot help themselves. They're like animals. And so in this case, not just men, but people in general with this virus literally can't control themselves. And I think because it's so over the top, you see the absurdity of that statement because men are people and that is not the case. So yeah, definitely would recommend this with that caveat. Another one that I thought was amazing but also has some difficult content in it is Sorrowland by River Solomon. This, ooh man, so good, so weird and intense. It is a horror novel about a pregnant teen girl who is escaping a cult where she was impregnated with twins. She gives birth to them in the woods and is trying to survive in the woods with them, but is transforming into something strange. So it is got, it's got these weird fantastical elements to it, but it is dealing with religious trauma and abuse and motherhood and, and queerness and 
gender fluidity and there's a lot of really interesting things. River Solomon is an incredible writer and this is one of my favorite books from them so do recommend but again use caution it's intense at times. Next if you guessed this was on the list you were right this is Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. I freaking loved this book one of my favorite books of last year it hit so hard. I was like, you either had to live it or be so deeply familiar with the minute specifics of American evangelicalism in the 90s because there are so many little details. This is a book that has horror surrounding a conversion camp, but with weird paranormal elements to it, I'll say. And it nailed so many things and it is another book that is hopeful ultimately but it goes through a lot to get there it's not very long it's a quick read and I cannot say enough good things about it so good the last horror type book that I have is kind of a blend of fantasy mythology and horror and it is a short story collection this is The Mary Spinster Tales of Everyday Horror by Daniel M. Lavery. The author is trans and this did not go over well with all readers but I think because it's pretty niche there is so much evangelical Christian stuff sprinkled through these stories and it is about religious trauma, it is about abuse, it's about gender identity, and it draws on fairy tales and folk tales as a way of exploring those things, and I loved it. Loved it. Highly recommend if you are going through deconstruction. I think this is a really good option. We have one book that is sci-fi slash dystopian that is an excellent duology that I recommend. The first book being Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler man this feels prophetic it came out no joke this book came out in 1993 and the way it feels like prophetic of what we are seeing in 2024 it's a lot and it's set <laughs> like around now too which is wild it's set in a dystopian future where the world is kind of ending our main character is the daughter of a pastor who ends up going on to form her own religious group and it's really interesting the way that it thinks about religion and spirituality and what it means and why it may or may not be a valuable and how it can be used for political extremism there is a character in this series who is a religious and political extremist trying to become president whose tagline is literally make America great again. It's like, it's, it's wild. The first time I read that I was like, what? So if you haven't read these, highly recommend Octavia Butler is a queen. Amazing. Next is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is a gorgeous historical fantasy about a group of siblings who are living in kind of an Asian version of Britain when Christianity is starting to spread. And I'll tell you that the priest in this book is kind of the villain. He wants women to be in more set gender roles and doesn't want them going outside of that. He wants them to stop doing their traditional sort of spiritual religious practices with the land, but in this case there is real magic in the land. And one of the siblings is trans and his journey made me cry. This book is gorgeous. It will make you sob, but it is so good and I loved it. And I think it's really interesting if you're thinking about like where did different kinds of spirituality originate? What did Christianity displace in certain places? I, I think it's interesting. Lastly, we have the first book in a very beloved fantasy trilogy that is doing something pretty similar actually to Sister Song in a different place and time and that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. So this is set in a fantastical version of Eastern Europe, I think like Russia, around the time that again Christianity is starting to spread. And there is this battle between 
Christianity and traditional folk religions and the magic that comes with those things. And this is a coming of age story of a young woman who grows up and is fighting against the system that she is expected to submit to, this patriarchal system where she will marry young and have babies, and that is not what she wants. I love this entire series. It's gorgeously written, it's lyrical, it's incredible fantasy, but at its heart, it's also, again, grappling with some of these religious complications, and I think it's helpful. Another one that I think is good early on, I read this earlier, <laughs> I would say, than some of the other ones, and it was really good. So some of these are a little more intense than others. There's a variety of genres and age categories. There's nonfiction. Hopefully you found something interesting that you'd like to pick up. These are books that I have found really meaningful and really helpful through my own journey, and hopefully they'll help some of you. So talk to me in the comments down below, let me know any of your thoughts, and let me know if there are any books that I didn't mention here that you've read that you have found to be really helpful in this process. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.